Hello, this is Dr. Kai and welcome to the latest video on the Oculus Runtime Switcher, your favourite program in the world. And we're now up to version 3, woohoo! Version 3 has uh, addressed some major issues that have cropped up. For example, 0 0.8 stopped working when 0 0.3, sorry, 1.3.2 came out. Uh, 0 0.8 now works and that is thanks uh, in big part to um, Neo Zero and Cybera who have brought to my attention the script files, which I've now incorporated into version 3. 0 0.6 now also works for everyone, so that's a, a big round of applause to them for that. And um, also we have some additional functionality, which is what this video is going to be about. I want to make a guide about it because there's some new things to do. If you need to know how to do the basics, which were covered in the first video, then click the link that's on the screen now, and that will take you to the first video, which you should watch first um, if you don't know how the program works. Um, and before I go anywhere else, I just want to say that for those people that do want to say thanks but can't donate, and I completely understand that, money is tight these days, um, you can still say thanks by subscribing to my channel, because I am trying to build my channel up. I think I've got some fantastic content um, in the past and upcoming. Um, I'm making a new series, a documentary series about space. It's going to be fantastic. It's going to break ground. Um, and it's going to be using the game called Space Engine, which is a VR game. So you might ever get some VR videos uh, out of that and you can also play along by watching and yep yeah, uh, if you do click the this button here teaser it will take you to a super secret video called um, which is unlisted which is the trailer to the upcoming series anyway enough about that let's get on to the latest changes in the runtime switcher so the first thing you'll notice is the oculus runtime switcher version 3.exe.config file over here is new in it it gives you the ability to change the install paths for the older runtimes. We're not talking about the new runtime, the latest runtime, we're just talking about the four older ones. And you'll notice that if you change that and save, then that grays out. Um, so firstly, this does oops, this does need to be in the same folder as the exe, obviously. I mean, I wouldn't, I'd keep them all together. They all do need to be together. Um, but you now have the ability to change the install locations. It, I, I've kept the graying out functionality because I really don't want people running the scripts where nothing actually exists that could screw things up and it can confuse people and you can end up with all kinds of problems which I don't want to fix. Um, you also need to make sure you update the paths here obviously in the script files each individual one. 0 0.8 features in 0 0.5 and 0 0.6 and 0 0.7 so if you change that you have to update it in all of them um, and you have to make sure every single line that has any kind of path reflects the actual path that you've installed it to. Um, for the latest runtime, it actually detects your install location, so you can install it anywhere you want and the program will detect it from the registry. Um, and if it's not detecting it, it means that something has been balked with your install. So I suggest you go through the README um, and go down to the troubleshooting section and go through this and completely and utterly do a clean uninstall and a clean install. Um, and hopefully it will be detected then. If it doesn't, you can try and get in touch with me via the forums or through my YouTube channel, commenting on this video perhaps. Um, and I'll try and help, or someone else, some other kind soul will. Um, and there's some other functionality, I've added an exit button, so you don't have to find it down here to exit it, um, but like, you know, there it's gone. Um, I've added a context menu, and let's see, if it's down there and you try and open it again, it will bring it to the forefront, which is a new feature. I have to thank my very close friend for helping me figure out how to do that in the bloody Visual Basic code. Um, and you also now, for 0 0.6, you have to read this. This is a very important step, and we thank Cybula for that. You basically have to right-click this file, and obviously the path will be different for you if you've not put it in the default place um, that I've instructed you to, and you need to go to the compatibility tab and change it to Windows 8 compatibility mode for 0 0.6 to work. Okay, I think I've prattled on enough. I think that is basically all you need to know about the runtime switcher, which is now basically future-proof. Um, any future changes are probably going to involve just changing the script files, and you can probably find out about how to do that on the forums. I may update it further. There's some other things I'd like to add, and things may change. I might need to update it. So always uh, keep an eye on this if things go wrong. The updates and info button, which will take you to the Frontier forum thread. You don't need to be a member. Um, of this forum because I'll make all the links public and all the latest information will be here as well. Um, and also bear in mind that this may work on the TV1 soon if some of the rumored DLLs that convert the Windows recognition of the CV1 to be a DK2 actually get released and someone actually figures out how to use them and I might actually include that in a future update. So this program may soon be available to everyone. But anyway, I've sold my DK2. If it doesn't work, I don't know how to fix it. 
Hopefully you guys will help me fix it for the net uh, for any improvements, and I can't wait for my CV one to arrive. So, yep. Yeah. Okay, game on, guys. Game on.